Hey, Sean, let me, let me just interject in there because I've got some questions about this sort of optimization and how we're determining who's optimally healthy. Because, uh, you know, a lot of what, traditional medicine, we look at risk profiling. We say we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna look at a bunch of risk factors and we're kind of trying to model, you know, try to improve those risk factors. And I think what we're seeing with, you know, looking at visceral fat, at least in my view, is this is more indicative of actual disease or lack of disease that we can actually see it's tangible rather than theoretical risk factors, which may or may not be uh, applicable in all cases in all situations. So I think we're a step closer. I think things like the coronary artery calcium scan, carotid intermedial thickening, and I know you talk about uh, uh, you know brain vasculature as well, which is kind of similar. Um, and so we we become closer to identifying actual disease that we can you know we can see with this advanced imaging. Uh, you know earlier on, I suppose, rather than you know what's what's my cholesterol, what's my glucose level, so on and so forth, which I think are really broad but imprecise tools. Um, why do you think that visceral fat is important? What data is out there? And how are you going to say, I'm going to choose the healthiest people? How do we even know who these people are? What are we basing that on? Mm. Well, you know, concerning the target of visceral fat, um, it, it's, it's disappointing to me that we don't have more studies on it. You know what we have studies on? Things that uh, people can make money off of. Uh, you can't make money off visceral fat because there's no pharmaceutical drug for it. So you don't have right away uh, an emphasis or incentivization on researchers to go out and take a look at it because they don't know how to get rid of it and they don't know how to make a medication for it. But I can tell you anecdotally from scanning over 4,000 patients, eliminating visceral fat, traumatic. So it would be beneficial if we were able to aggregate that data and be able to uh, inform people and put it into a study where it shows it, but um, it, it's a difficult thing to do. You know, to do studies, you got to have money, and money doesn't show up for um, biomarkers that that don't make pharmaceutical companies or the healthcare system a lot of money. So, what I'd like to do is get the internet community excited about visceral fat, start tracking it, getting rid of it, and promoting it. Then I think we can drive hopefully some political interest from the National Science Foundation, National Institute of Health, government funding, universities start looking at this target. But in the meantime, um, I think we, we do need to collect data and start looking at that, the effectiveness of that. But I'm very disappointed that there really uh, has not been much uh, studies on this, this target. So uh, I, I hope that one of the exciting things that comes from social media is it gets people tar talking and trying safe things, you know, like, you know, cutting out carbohydrates and processed foods, going carnivore, going, going keto, and eliminating visceral fat and tracking that difference because, you know, it's, it's the internet community that's, that's really helping to promote that. It's not coming from doctors. It's not coming from conventional healthcare. In fact, I think there's a conflict of interest there. But uh, I'm a huge advocate of visceral fat and challenge anybody who's watching this video uh, to track their visceral fat. And we can get into how, how you can do that, you know, several different ways that you can start tracking that. But visceral fat is, is a very early expression of disease. And I see it in kids, you know, my own kids. <laughs> you know, I scan them, I can track their visceral fat. Uh, within their abdominal cavities and soldiers and that served with me in the army uh, in their teenage and 20 year uh, in their 20s I can see visceral fat and so we've got a lot of experience looking at that marker and when you eliminate it people's health improves their appearance improves their performance improves their lives improve so I think uh, it, I think it really is a is a really useful uh, target and this contest that uh, you and I have talked a little bit about between a, 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 a two identical twin brothers that are going to adopt a carnivore. One's going to eat carnivore, the other one's going to continue to eat carbohydrates. I think will be uh, interesting to, to take a look at because I'd like to see the carnivore community uh, tracking visceral fat and seeing the difference it makes because, in my opinion, uh, carnivores is going to dramatically reduce visceral fat. And I say this based on my own experience looking at the carnivore community that they develop a hunter gatherer face. And so that hunter gatherer face is 
consistent with somebody who has low amounts of visceral fat within their abdomen. And we don't, I'm not seeing it in the, in the vegan community. They actually have, surprisingly, when I scan them, a large amount, surprising amount of visceral fat that's retained, it, retained within them, even though they might be a relatively thin, what we call tofi, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. They, they have this uh, visceral fat and they get this inflammatory look on their face. And it, if you're watching this video, it's not the young vegans. It's the ones that have been vegans for a long time. They get puffy, edematous, swollen faces. This tissue right up in this area gets swollen and they lose that definition that otherwise they used to have when they were younger through the accumulation of visceral fat. And anybody else that is accumulating chronic disease, visceral fat, will have that same look. Your face, Zach's, other people in the carnivore community, those that have eliminated processed foods, get this nice defined hunter-gatherer look to their face because they reduce visceral fat and they just start to look better. Sean, what are some of the ways that people are tracking visceral fat? Is it something where they have to get an MRI or can they do like DEXA scan type things as well? Yeah, so that's a great question. So DEXA scan are available. They're only $100 typically. So they're a, um, a more affordable option than an MRI. The downside or disadvantage, I should say, there's just a couple with DEXA. And uh, believe me, my passion is to get our country healthy. So I, I have no vested interest in an MRI other than we use it in our facility. But the DEXA scan does expose you to radiation. So it uses ionizing radiation. So you don't want to have a scan all the time. An MRI doesn't use radiation. So I can scan people literally every day. And I have done that. I've scanned people on Friday, have them come back on Monday. Um, they've eaten carbohydrates over the weekend, going to weddings, and we can show them where they've increased their visceral fat. It's that sensitive. So DEXA scan doesn't lend itself quite so usefully for research purposes and maybe tracking it very frequently because you wouldn't want to do x-rays all the time to, to measure a biomarker. But the other disadvantage to the DEXA scan is it tends to um, only give you longitudinal uh, views of that visceral fat. So you're, uh, you can't get a cross-sectional view of it. So cross-sectional views where, you, you know, you, you kind of, you cut this direction, you could see that um, the accumulation of visceral fat solid within the abdominal cavity. And uh, that, that visually has such an impact on people because they might pinch, you know, a small amount of fat on their skin, walk around thinking they're really healthy. And yet when you look at them inside, they're filled with visceral fat that I literally, at least on one occasion, had one of my clients pass out, fall down, hit the floor, because he was so shocked and impacted by the amount of visceral fat that he had inside him belts that he was so surprised at. So that kind of emotional impact, seeing that, confronting people with the fact that they're not as healthy as they thought they were is useful. And I think a hundred years from now, we're going to look back and say, look how incredibly diseased those people were in 2020. The amount of chronic disease that we have has never, ever been so high in the history of Homo sapiens. So measuring visceral fat, I think, will, will be one of the first steps, a very useful step, to get rid of that uh, accumulation of chronic disease. A DEXA scan is a great way of doing it. But another way of doing it is the, the poor man's version of this, and I'll just share with the internet community. Lay on your back and you lie flat, and if you got a lot of visceral fat, your stomach will stick up. If you're a guy in your 50s and 60s and you got one of those bellies that are big, you know, pendulous abdomens, we call them, you know, a big panis, a big abdomen. That abdomen will stick right up in the air when you lay in the back, like Mount Fuji it sticks up in the air. That's visceral fat. It's not subcutaneous fat. Because subcutaneous fat rolls to the side because it's smooth. It doesn't have that higher density, that gelatinous characteristic that visceral fat has. And so that's a poor man's marker for the amount of visceral fat you have. So if you lay down and you've got a stomach that sticks up, you've got a problem. 
and you need to get rid of that visceral fat. So you can start tracking it. You can put a, a, a ruler next to it and actually measure how high your abdomen sticks up. In some cases, I've had patients, I've had to go past a rule and get a yardstick because <laughs> that amount of visceral fat is so high up. And um, I actually invented a device that went on to get patented. Uh, and I, if you got an investor, I'll give it to you. I don't want any money. I just want to get it out there, a useful consumer device that will help people measure their visceral fat and help promote this, this particular bio, this biomarker. So that's a couple versions. One's just laying down measuring it. The other one is the, the uh, DEXA scan that I think are, are useful for your, your audience to, to pay attention and track. And I hope we get your audience, carnivore community, excited about visceral fat and tracking it uh, because when they get started on the carnivore diet, it would be useful to uh, sort of collect that and anecdotally um, you know, show and, and aggregate that people lose visceral fat when they go carnivore. Hey, Sean, I, I know you.